So, uh, stage three. Stage three is relatively difficult, but it's but it's not that bad. It's just it is slightly hard. So you know, just be a bit careful, and you'll be okay. I I guess I couldn't get full power from that even if I wanted. But oh well. Alice at hard, you know, this is not bad. When it's a lunatic, it's a right pain because there's two waves in each of these things, and it just it's super claustrophobic at that point, but then hard? Really not that bad. It's a completely static pattern that you can learn. Maybe that's why Perfect Cherry Blossom to me is easier, because there's a lot of stuff that you can just learn in it, you know? Well, regardless of that fact, for this bit, well, a lot of the fire is aimed at you, so... Just try and sort of stream it, I suppose. Hey, well, I got my extra life back for that, so that's okay. But yeah, just try and alternate between left and right there, it's not that bad. For this bit, well, you can learn this. It's not, you know, something that you can't learn how to do. Uh, there really isn't very much to say about it, apart from just concentrate and, you know, make sure you're fully aware of where you are on the screen at all times. And then for this, well, she has a spell card, obviously, as well, this being hard mode and all. This is not difficult, although sometimes it just randomly kills me out of nowhere. Like, a, a laser will be forming, but it won't... I've, you know, it will literally just appear right on top of me. Without forming, and it manages to kill me anyway. But, you know, that doesn't seem to be happening here, which is good. And there we go. You can see I've already gone another border, even though I only just finished with one come the end of the second section there. So, it's really, really starting to build up now. And, well, for this bit, try and kill the fairies which have got the spell symbol there. I'm lucky I death on that. That was way out of time. Oh, well, whatever. Just, yeah, try and kill the ones which have got the spell symbol, because they're the ones that shoot the most dangerous Dan Marco out. But pay attention to the other ones as well, because they're firing aim aimed shots at you. <laughs> it's difficult to justify, but, you know. Anyway... Now, Alice is here to try and tell us a little bit about what the plot is going forward. So, you know, she is a rainbow-colored person, even though she's only wearing three colors. Well, okay, technically four if you want to put white in there, but, you know, she's not wearing very many colors, that's the thing. And apparently we know her. Well, technically we do, because she was part of the cast in, um, one of them, I think it was Mystic Square? I have no idea, I don't know the PC-98 ones very well, but the point is, she was the extra stage boss, and I mean Toho 5, I believe. It's either 4 or 5. I think 4 was Yuka, though, so yeah, it would be Toho 5. Whatever, that's not getting anything said about this. Her, you know, pretty much the idea of all of this is that she's now going to tell us that somebody is gathering the spring, as, you know, we're getting to right here. Somebody's been gathering spring, and it's not Alice, despite what Mamie would say here. And, yeah, the idea now is that Alice wants to apparently collect our spring. But we're doing a good job of collecting our spring for ourselves, thank you very much. The fight itself is kind of hard. There's a couple of spells I... well, one spell I really dislike, and the first non-spell's not that easy either, but... It's when it gets to Lunatic, it starts getting seriously hard. But at this point, well, it's okay. For this non-spell, apparently the center is really dangerous, but maybe that's just on Lunatic, because I don't see it. You know, when I go to clear this one of the, you know, these white-blue bullets here, I don't see how the center is any more dangerous than anywhere else. I am not playing this very well. Taking risks all over the place here. Oh, well. So, uh, this spell card. This spell card is perfectly fine at this level. As soon as it gets to Lunatic, it's horrible because it splits again. And, you know, a free wave split of that speed is just too much for me to handle. But, um, this is perfectly capable, you know, perfectly fine. Not too bad, just look at the, look for the openings and it's great, you know? Very easy. Most pointless non-spell ever. That is ridiculous, and thank god for that. I've got a border to start with. It's a little bit too early, but I've got one here. I freaking hate this spell card. I know sort of what to do with it, and I'm already doing the complete wrong thing for what I want to do, so I'm gonna have to bomb that. My idea is to stay on one side and try, usually the left-hand side, and try to just, you know, anticipate where the bullets are coming. The bullets spread out as they get further across the screen, which is why that's not a good idea. I, 
I just really, really freaking hate this card, because especially with Reimu, I cannot get damage done to this card. You know, I, I never managed to stay under Alice for it, it's the worst card ever to do that. Oh well, wh whatever, you know? This is one of those sort of like pattern based things that you can just kind of learn, you know? I don't know quite why I changed my strategy for the red and blue bullets there, but it just seems to work out better. And then for that bit, well, I cut through the arrows and that just seems to work. Hopefully no more fail in this, because Alice is not that hard from here on out. You know, Alice's hard stuff is right at the start of the fight. The rest of it's really not too bad, so hopefully we'll get this done. This is another one of those cards, like Letty's second one, which changes depending on the, you know, the, um, the difficulty. That's what I'm trying to say. And, well, it's, it's not bad. It's really not too bad. It's a completely static type of thing, so you can just learn where to go, and it's fine. There we go. No problem. Then for the last one, Shanghai Doll. I think it's Horai Doll at Lunatic, but it's not too bad, again. It's easier than the last card anyway, and um, just look where the, s the bubbles are going and try not to get yourself walled by the yellow bullets because the yellow ones are the ones which form that sort of dense wall there. And yeah, it's not bad. You can skip way in between them. The card doesn't have a lot of HP, so it's not too bad at all. Especially if you're using either Reimu B or Marissa A. Everybody, I mean, most characters, apart from Reimu A, because Reimu A can't kill anything, but, you know, every other character has quite an easy time with that one, so... Yeah, even Sakuya can do that one quite well. That's saying something. So, on to stage 4, and this is one which I would like to stop talking at, but there's a lot of strategy you've got to employ in this one, so it's not worth stopping. This is pretty much my favourite stage. One of my favourite stages in all of Toho, actually. You know, for the stage plus boss combination. This is just... magnificent. It's long and it's difficult, but it's magnificent nevertheless. Whoa! Hi there, that was not how it was supposed to go. Um, <laughs> yeah. I must not have killed it. Amazing. Oh well. Most of this stage has aimed fire at you, so you know, you've just got to stream it basically, that's half of the idea of this stage, it's just streaming. Nothing more, nothing less. Um, yeah, that, it's the same bit for the first couple of sessions, and then, well, this is where Reimu really, really fails, this is why I absolutely hate Reimu as a shot type for this. Reimu is just too slow. I'm lucky I've got a border for some of this actually, because it makes item gathering a lot quicker, a lot easier. But Reimu is just very, very slow, and I've managed now to get myself kind of semi-screwed here. But I've recovered it pretty well, so yeah, we'll go with that. I'll just work with it. And then for this bit, well, be a little bit careful because the aimed fire is kind of annoying here, but if you don't kill these things quick enough, then they will fire green aimed arrows at you, which are, to be honest, they're easier to get rid of, but then you won't get as many point items. So, you know, it's kind of a bit of a hit and miss thing for this. For this bit, well, you can stream it. That's simply put. That's really all I'm going to do here, is I'm just going to stream the thing, you know. And then, well, here you would want to stop firing at any other difficulty, but I find it hard. It's kind of okay to do it like this. You've just got to find the gap to go through, and it is fine. That way I can get at least a few more point items and stuff as well. Get a little bit of cherry for the border stuff. And now we have the mid-boss, Lily White. Yes, we're only at the mid-boss, it's a really long stage. But, you know, Lily is the Harbinger of Spring. So, you know, seeing her here means that we must be getting close to where Spring is. The thing is, the way she shows that Spring is coming is by showering us with Don Marker. And really freaking dense Don Marker as well. Luckily, mo most of it is aimed. That doesn't stop me from freaking sucking at it, but... Oh, I can, I can do this. This is freaking annoying. Oh well, whatever. This part is just a pain in the ass in general, because some of it you want to not fire at, and some of it you want to fire at. It's just generally annoying. For, like, for here, I would ideally stop firing, and I don't know what the fuck happened there. That was terrible. Oh, why am I doing so badly at this stage? I can do this. Oh well. Same idea as one of the bits at the start, except it's purely, you know, straight vertical fire that they shoot. They're not shooting at you this time. They do take longer to kill those, so for Reimu this is a bit more annoying. If 
for Marissa it's perfectly fine, but for Rimu that's irritating. And then this bit, well, this you've just got to kind of learn a bit. Don't move too fast because those fairies are continuously shooting aimed fire. So, you know, you don't want to move so fast that you end up getting walled. But you do need to move in, like, those concerted steps there. That's just about all I can really say for it. It's not that hard, but just make sure you're moving well and, you know, moving accurately, and it's okay. Look how quickly I've got that border back, though, you know, considering. So, beyond that, this Death Fairy is the second of the series, of course. And, well, it's not too hard, so long as you know that's what you've got to do for that first wave. Kill it off quickly, though, because otherwise you're going to find it hard to dodge at the end there. And you'll probably miss your bomb if you don't get it done quick. And the stage is so perfectly timed that, you know, as soon as you kill that Death Fairy, that Death Fairy stops firing. It, you know, the music ends. Absolutely beautiful. So yeah, why are the cherries coming up here? Well, they're getting blown away by something, surely. Yeah, somebody usually does pop out right now, so somebody will pop out. This is Lunasa Prison River of the Prison River Sisters. My favourite of the three, just because, I, I think it's just because she's wearing black, but you know, she just seems like the coolest one to me. So, you know, that's just how it is. And yeah, looks like the tension's about to lower, so it looks like we're getting friendly here. Vemu, for once, is actually being friendly. That's remarkable. So yeah, nobody is telling us to go home, but nobody is telling us we can go forward either. So yeah, as they're sending air currents? I don't really see what the whole relevance of that is, but you know. Apparently Lunasa is hurrying too much. According to Merlin, at least. So Merlin is kind of crazy, and then, you know, Lyrica is just kind of fun-loving, and between them, well, they're just awesome. They have one of the coolest theme musics. I think this is like my third or fourth favorite um, boss music. Absolutely beautiful. I could listen to this all day, and I, sometimes I feel like I do, but you know, it doesn't matter how many mixes of this I hear, the original will always have a special place for me. This is just absolutely wonderful. The boss fight itself is not as hard as Patchy. It depends on who you fight halfway through, mind you, but each character has, not each shot type this time, each character has a different person they fight at the start. So we're going to be fighting Lunasa because I'm using Reimu. Obviously if you use Marissa you fight against Lyrica at the start, Sakuya plays Merlin. Merlin's probably the hardest of the three to start with, so whatever. Although to be honest I don't like Lunasa's non-spells. But hey, we'll do it anyhow. So, this one, oh, this is just really, really random. I usually find the first non-spell is the worst for the sisters, you know, but I try and only do this one with vertical movement because otherwise I'm going to get smacked by the pellets. But it can be very difficult to do with only vertical movement because sometimes those um, purple bullets just wall you for no apparent reason. But we managed it this time, that's good. And then this, well, the second and the third waves are hell for this. I actually think this is a really nasty non-spell, but, well, you can sort of learn it. It's just, oh, it's painful trying to get through, especially this. I mean, you've just got to be paying a lot of attention, which is why I'm should, probably not saying anything particularly meaningful here. But there we go. So now this, this spell card is simple streaming. The red circle bullets kind of get in the way, but whoa, black spike, that's not good. Anyway, I've got a border, that's nice. So this spell card determines what sister you're going to fight next, and I believe it's probably going to be Merlin because of how far I'm over here. That's not necessarily that great, Merlin's one of the harder ones to fight here, but oh well. So we'll get to see somebody different rather than just Lunasa all the time here. But yeah, whoever you do most damage to in that last spell card is the one you'll fight for the next one. Each one has one unique spell and non-spell to work with here, and yeah, it's it's good fun though. Although I actually know nothing about this spell card, so this is going to be kind of scary. I do remember Easy Mode's one being really horrible though, so I don't know. Okay, so there's a bunch of aim fire in this one. That's that's handleable. Uh, gotta watch where those um, weird lasers are going. No, oh crap. 
Yeah, I probably would have got away with that actually, but I wasn't confident enough to do it, so oh well. And now the three sisters come back again, and this pretty much shows why they're called the Prison River Sisters. They start refracting the bullets. I love this spell card, and the next one that comes actually. They're very awesome concepts. One of the best concepts for a card I've seen in a while, and yeah, refracting lasers are just great. It's a little bit easier on hard than it is on normal actually, but then this one more than makes up for it. Concerto Grosso is, well, I, o I often get killed by the yellow bullets in this one because I find the yellow bullets are the hardest ones to see. What makes this spell card difficult now is the fact that they add prongs to the triangle. So now they start refracting the bullets closer to you and it's difficult to predict. And especially considering some of the bullets are much, much faster than the others. Excellent! Fuck yes! I'm, I'm really, really happy I captured that because I'm, I'm... I find it very difficult, especially with Rainbow. I find it very, very difficult to capture that card. So I am absolutely amazed that I've managed that. Awesome stuff. Awesome, awesome stuff. And look at that, we've got freaking 36 point, you know, 36 and a quarter million bonus points from that stage, even though I still screwed it up horribly. Excellent.